Wir waren bei AMD zu Gast in München auf dem Kaveri Briefing und dort hat uns der bekannte Übertakter, der jetzt in Diensten von AMD steht, Sami Makin, das Übertakten des A10-7850K auf einem Asus A88X Pro vorgeführt. Und wir zeigen euch jetzt mal, was man da so erwarten kann. Using a low profile heatsink here. Um, Asus board. Latest BIOS. Um, we have obviously um, 8 gigs of memory, um, 2x4. And, you know, if you have been tweaking previous APUs, you're very familiar with how you want to approach. No, no. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, ah, 300 is the one, one step at a time. <laughs> so basically, your ref clock, which will have impact on all the frequencies across the system, um, basically you want to use that to do kind of fine tuning. You first use your ratios to get you know up to the level where you find stability or instability, and then you use the ref clock to fine tune. Obviously, you will need ref clock if you want to push memory beyond 2400 because that's the highest multiplier. Um, and the range obviously might vary from system to system, uh, but basically that's that's your fine-tuning item. Uh, memory, you want to set to the highest possible frequency based on whatever spec you have. Um, I found that a lot of memory is actually very overclockable. Actually, this dim here is rated for 1866. Um, obviously, at that speed, it has pretty tight timings. But with APU, with graphics memory, you don't usually need to run very tight latencies. So it's more frequency is more important uh, than, the, than the latencies. CPU, you don't necessarily need to overclock. In, in fact, you could even uh, underclock, undervolt, if you want to maintain and give you know more power for the GPU portion and not run into any thermal issues. Um, Northbridge, another knob that will help you boost your your memory bandwidth. Um, there was the slide showing, you know, 300 megahertz of CPU, 300 megahertz of memory uh, no, on GPU. I did the same with uh, with NB um, from 1.8 to 2.1, and yeah, it gives you a couple percent extra. So that's another uh, item you could tweak. It's not a, as dramatic as GPU frequency by any means, but it helps you a little bit. Um, GPU clock. So that's obviously your your key item. You can set it here from the from the BIOS menu or you can set it through Windows. <coughs> uh, and basically, the BIOS menu shows the steps of GPU clock, which you would get if you're using the default 100 MHz ref clock. So basically, these values are all divided from the main PLL, which runs at 3.6 GHz. So essentially, these are just divider values from, from that main PLL. Now, yeah, 720 is the default. Um, for the purpose of this demo, let's let's do that. You know, 300 megahertz overclock, a little bit over one gig. So essentially, we're running CPU at default, memory is at 2400, and we just overclock the GPU by 300 megahertz. Um, these are the timings I'm using. These seem to work. Uh, tried a few different modules, and you know, these are seem to be stable, stable, stable settings, and still give you decent performance. As mentioned, frequency seems to be the key not the latencies. Um, in terms of memory clocking, it seems like based on what I've tested with this platform versus the Richland platform or the Trinity platform, um, on those earlier ones, 2400 might have been a little bit of a, a tricky to get fully stable. You might need to go and you know fine-tune some of the sub-timings to, to get achieve full stability. Um, with this platform, it was just plug and play. I just used the same settings and 2400 was easy, 2500 runs fine, 2550 then it's becoming a little bit more tricky. You might need to do, you, well, it might be the memory maxing out or it might need some, you know, better tuning, someone who knows memory better than, than I do. With four dims, uh, it's okay? With four dims, also okay? Um, that one, I'm not sure if I tested. I think someone did test it and it was, it, uh, the official spec is for two um, per channel, no, no, for one per channel at these frequencies. Um, but I think you know high, higher loads were also looking better than on the previous platform. Um, some of the voltage tuning, obviously, 
if you overclock and over voltage, you want to maintain a stable voltage level to make sure that you know you're not getting any big dips on the levels when you're overclocking that might hurt your overclocking so these are the settings I'm using here uh, voltage obviously depends on the, on the part you get uh, I think by default the CPU is at 1.3 or something like that um, GPU default voltage again might vary between 1.17 1.225 so for this demo, let's just set it to on the safe side a little bit over 1.3. Memory is at 1.6 volts. You didn't see any gains by going to a higher uh, voltage level there. So pretty straightforward stuff there. Um, CPU configuration, a couple of things I've uh, just disabled here to maintain uh, stable frequencies. So cool and quiet is disabled as well as uh, the turbo core feature. And I think that's about it. So basically, 300 megahertz overclock, slight uh, bump on the voltage, and hopefully it will run. Because <laughs> if it doesn't, then yeah, it just kill our two additional demos. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna run a quick benchmark here with the uh, IDA64, it's the GP GPU benchmark. Can, uh, so you can measure your GPU or GPU or, or both. I'll just run the GPU part. So you see the frequencies there. Let's get that guy started. So it measures memory bandwidth and, and then uh, gives you the, uh, the compute performance, the gigaflops. And while this guy runs, let me open uh, in the overdrive. So slight update for this version to support Kaveri. Um, so you could have set the GPU overclock through here as well. So if you want to experiment and see, you know, quickly if, if your overclock is stable or not, you could just uh, fine tune it here. Same uh, clock steps apply obviously here as well. And you can overclock the, uh, the CPU. You can disable turbo core. Um, I think there was uh, some update also on the mem on the um, thermal me monitoring. So essentially, it's showing thermal margin, whereas previously it was showing the kind of arbitrary number of uh, some arbitrary number. So basically, this shows how much thermal margin you have left until you reach your um, your your temperature limit. So we seem to have a good good margin left there. And. The GPGPU benchmark has just finished, so these are readings just from the GPU, obviously. So, well over uh, one teraflop from the GPU. If you if we ran the CPU on top, it would be uh, closer to 1.2 teraflops because you get a little bit over 100 gigaflops from the CPU cores. So just a couple of examples here on overclocking. Um, I had a few results I wanted to share. So here's that same benchmark. I didn't want to max it out here and crash. So this is just the, the, the highest I ran earlier, uh, which also includes now the, the CPU part. The CPU is still running at default. But if you do the math, so on the GPU you get over 1.1 teraflops. Combine that with the CPU reading and you're at well over 1.2 teraflops. I run 3D Mark. Um, I think this is the highest APU score I've seen. This is run with the default settings, so no, no tweaking on the image quality settings. I think if you run um, with some of those, I guess, competitive settings, you could get easily a couple hundred points more. And actually, just the other day, I found a tweak for this one, so this is not even a very good score. There's, it will go higher easily. So, what's the tweak? I will tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> Or you may find it yourself. Das war eines unserer vier AMD A10-7850K Videos, die wir innerhalb der kurzen Zeit, die uns das Sample zur Verfügung stand, abgefilmt haben. Verpassen Sie nicht die anderen drei Videos, die Sie in unseren Videokanälen finden.